Exterior walls provide the main structure of the home. It is imperative that the exterior walls are structurally sound and are properly sealed to provide the intended protection from the outside elements. The exterior walls comprised of several different parts. In this diagram, you can see the finished grade where a house will be built. The cement footings are poured and the foundation and slab are laid in order to support the weight of the home. Next, a wooden frame is built and drywall, insulation, and a vapor barrier generally make up the inside portion of the wall. What is seen from the outside is the exterior wall's veneer, which can be made of stucco, brick, siding, or some other material. Note there is a difference between the foundation of the house and the exterior wall. Exterior insulation and finishing systems, or EFIS, are generally face-sealed wall systems. EFIS systems that are face sealed, meaning they contain no drainage space between the exterior veneer and the vapor barrier, may be inherently flawed, making them unfit for use in all but very dry regions of the country. Modern home science has advocated a new stacking order for exterior wall materials. This was implemented because the old way was not allowing the exterior walls to dry out properly, causing mold to grow inside the walls. This new technique utilizes the same wooden frame. Next, unfaced insulation bats are sandwiched between drywall and plywood. Then two layers of one inch extruded polystyrene or XPS foam is installed with their seams staggered. A vapor barrier is installed and wooden spacing strips are mounted creating a drainage channel and allowing proper ventilation. Lastly, the exterior walls veneer is built. This technique is relatively new and may take a few years to be implemented market wide. When inspecting a home, it is important to look around the entire exterior of the house. Check the general condition of the outside walls to see that they are structurally sound with no visible damage. The walls should be clean and free of plants and other items which can promote deterioration. It is highly discouraged to ever allow vines or other plants to grow up along the side of the house. Plants grow into the walls and begin to force their way into the cracks, opening up the surfaces of the wall. This can damage mortar joints and loosen shingles, not to mention the dampness associated with the vines can promote rot and other problems. Vines themselves can hide wall damage while providing access for insect infestation, which can promote structural damage and health hazards. Deteriorating items placed up along the side of the house, such as stacked firewood, can encourage insects to come into contact with the exterior walls, so never place decomposable material in contact with the exterior walls of the home. This is a proper way to store firewood against the exterior walls of a house. Around the outside of the house, there should not be any exterior wood damage from dry rot or insect infestation. Look for areas where the wood seems to be withered or dried out. Damaged wood often looks like a dried piece of fruit, shriveled up or not quite firm and square. Lightly stick a sharp object into any questionable wood, and if it penetrates, then the wood is damaged. The wooden surfaces outside the house should be well painted or covered with a weather sealer to prevent deterioration from exposure to the elements. As you can see here, this paint has blistered on this wooden siding and needs to be repaired. Fascia and soffit boards should not be warped or cracked. Sidings, such as wood, vinyl, aluminum, or cement, should be intact with no dents or breaks. Check the entire house for areas that seem worn out or damaged. The siding should be firmly attached to the house and should be clean with no rust or other deterioration. The bottom of the siding should not come into contact with the ground given the continual dampness of dirt. Siding should be installed above the foundation of the house. Stucco is a popular style of exterior covering in the southwestern part of the United States. Although stucco is almost maintenance free, there are a few things to look for. Stucco should not be damaged, which can happen when it has been struck by a hard object or ran into by a heavy item as seen here. Stucco will disintegrate after constant exposure to water. Sprinklers sprayed on stucco walls can leach out the stucco and cause it to turn to powder and crumble off the surface of the house. On stucco walls, look for areas that are chalky or powdery. If you can see leaching and deterioration, this is a problem that needs to be addressed. 
The openings on the bottom of the stucco facade are called weep screed holes and are there to allow the wall to breathe and dry out. Here you can see a mirror that is placed against this stucco wall in order to inspect the weep screed. Not allowing the wall to breathe will cause the wall to rot internally and may lead to structural damage. There are two main applications for bricks or masonry walls. The first type was when a brick wall is used as a veneer or facade covering a wooden frame. This is generally used for decoration and is common throughout the United States. The second application for brick and walls is a solid brick wall. This is seen less and less in new construction because it is quite an expensive way to build. Additionally, brick walls are rigid and will crack as the house shifts from ground settling or a mild earthquake. When masonry walls are used as a veneer, check the mortar joints and bricks for cracks or damage. Make sure that everything is sealed so there is no access into the wooden frame of the wall. This style of wall should be built with a one inch drainage channel between the vapor barrier and the veneer allowing the brick to dry out properly. When dealing with solid masonry walls, you also want to check the bricks and mortar joints for cracks or damage. Additionally, you want to check for efflorescence, which are salt deposits on the outside of masonry walls. Efflorescence are usually brought to the face of the wall by water seeping through the wall or when the wall is always wet. When the water evaporates, the salt is left behind, what you need to know is that if these salt deposits are found, there may be a leak in the wall or in some way the wall is coming into contact with water. Other items to consider when inspecting the exterior walls of a home are as followed. An algae buildup is not a desirable condition for any exterior surface. Algae leads to dry rot and other deteriorating conditions. It is an indication that the house is not able to dry out properly which could be due to shading from trees or other structures. On this exterior stucco wall, you can see that the weep screed has been covered by an improperly installed sidewalk. The wall cannot dry out sufficiently, which has caused algae to develop. This is an early precursor to mold and water damage inside the wall. The entire perimeter of the home should have an open space between the foundation and the exterior wall be it wood, stucco, vinyl, or any composite. Dirt does not allow the exterior walls to properly vent. If dirt is allowed to build up to the siding or weep screed, problems will develop. Additionally, dirt along the side of the house, flush with the exterior wall, also allows termites to build their tunnels into the house, giving them a facilitated access throughout the structure of the home. Here you can see a concrete patio slab that was installed covering the weep screed and at an angle that directs water towards the house. This combination of errors will promote a rapid disintegration of the exterior wall. This is an all too common mistake made by homeowners, not realizing the catastrophic effects that the lack of proper wall ventilation will have on their home. Any such homeowner added features that prevent exterior wall ventilation would void the developer's responsibility to any wall or mold damage. It is important that overhanging plant material like bushes or trees are removed. The foliage fills the rain gutters, causing them to back up and misdirect water into the house. Tree limbs, blowing in the wind, could strike the house, causing damage to the roof and the exterior walls.